Hi folks, to say that we love our laser is an understatement, but let's make it even better with a DIY fourth axis. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Here's the design, Fusion 360 CAD and CAM files available over at nyccnc.com. First up, got a block of material on a Saunders fixture plate with a mod vise. Here it's re really helpful to have the mod vise because it's really quick to reorient it. And in this case, we don't have quite as much Y-axis in the 770, so flipping the part and cutting it sort of 90 degrees to what you normally do makes it a lot easier. And we're trying to do as much as we can in this first operation. And it's not a fifth axis strategy, but it's a fifth axis mentality of putting all of the work and all of the risk into one setup and one op. So much easier to hold tolerances and really makes more fun to make good parts. The part that we're making here is what we call the headstock or the main bracket. It's what's going to hold both the stepper motor as well as the bearing that will hold our three jaw chuck. And it, as well as the tailstock, will slide along these two rails which have end caps on each side and it'll rest nicely inside the laser. Did you notice earlier we had drilled two holes in every section? Drills are a great way to remove material. They're relatively inexpensive, generally no chatter or rigidity issues. So drilling those holes and then coming in with a 1 8 inch end mill to open them up, great recipe. We're getting better, we're deburring faster, we're spot drilling faster, or if you, especially when you've got 135 degree split point drills, you don't even need to spot. So we're done with op one. Op two is tricky, but let's stack the deck in our favor. We're using the MDF base that we laser cut for the casting pattern that we machined out of Renshape back in Wednesday Widget 193. By putting a couple of interpolated holes in there with dowel pins, we can then super glue it, and when we put it down on our part, we've got really good known alignment because we just machined those holes in place. Very similar methodology to soft jaws.
Some finish details, putting in the side hole for the split clamp. And cutting the slot for the split clamp. Card here to the super glue page where we walk through the various different super glues and tapes that we've used. We've absolutely been getting this working on different materials and with flood coolant. So be sure to check out what we're using and recommending as the latest and greatest. So we started talking about this in a recent Wednesday widget, but we are getting more comfortable with slotting. It absolutely has its places. And the shear hog is a great tool because it's such an open tool, unlikely to chip well. You can save a lot of time and again with super glue, you don't have that risk of your remnant piece of material falling off or pinching and breaking your tool or damaging your workpiece. Finishing up the tailstock, one of the things I like about this design is it was relatively easy to make in-house with some scrap materials that we had laying around. It's also a little bit more flexible. We're able to adjust these rails and make this longer if we want to. Boss Laser does sell a very similar style fourth axis or rotary attachment. Again, ours just sort of improves or makes a few tweaks off of it. Able to move your tailstock without tools and flipping the direction of the stepper motor just to save a little bit of room if you are trying to do something relatively wide. What's up next? Let's hide our two chuck spacers. Let's hide our chuck and let's hide our headstock. We've got to make this bearing. needs more torque. That's one of the downsides of the 440 and the 770 is you don't always have the, enough torque to run twist drills, but all you got to do is swap the belt into low gear. We really love these machines in their 10,000 RPM settings, and that's how we often run them, especially with aluminum, especially with the smaller diameter tools. So we probably only put them into the low belt once or twice a month, but when you need to run a twist drill, especially the larger diameter twist drills, that's the secret.
Before we head over to the lathe, let's use the DeWalt chop saw in our angle plate to lop off those corners. It's gonna just make everything a little bit easier when we take some interrupted cuts here. We are far from the first to come up with this idea, but adding some knurling to the part gives us a really nice mating surface as we press this bearing onto the part. And last but not least, mod vising some stock to make our two end supports. Parts are done, let's assemble it. We threw most of them into our tumbler just to give it a nice sort of homogenous or uniform look to it. You notice we've got the slots that let us easily pretension the belt uh, on the stepper motor as well as just to easily install it or remove it if needed. And we're using thumb screws where we can just so you've got one less tool needed to make adjustments when you're over at the machine. So what do we engrave first? Let's customize Jared's coffee mug. Jared served our country in the US Marine Corps so he had his battalion insignia and we engraved that on his coffee mug, which I thought was a really cool way to christen this fourth axis. We've got a few more projects in the works for it, so stick around folks. Otherwise, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed, take care, see you soon.